Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the the show. Go, go, go. You're a UFO guy. Dumbing down, mind control, and a lot of those things I've never even heard of. I need a document. Operation. You ready for this? Are you recording this? Maybe. Yes. Yes, I am. Good. <clears throat> yeah, the, the Zimbabwe school children. I have no idea what you're talking about. See, this is where missing four on one knowledge and UFO knowledge is gonna right merge. Well, like I said in our intro episode, uh, you were gonna be the UFO guy. Yes, and I can do that. And it, it, it boggles my mind. You don't know about the Zimbabwe school children. There's a school. I have no idea. And there were children in Zimbabwe. And a UFO landed, supposedly. And beings got out and talked to the children. What year did this happen? Uh, see, I'm not fully prepared. I'm just yapping. But not. they're all still alive. And they had, like, psychologists come in and, like, the children would... They had them draw pictures and everyone had the same story. Separate. Everyone had the same story. Drew the same pictures. And the uh, the being said that uh, we are, we are about to destroy ourselves. Now we need to stop doing what we're doing. And you know we've we've been doing what we've been doing since then. So <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, there was no change. Yeah. So who knows? But that's a very interesting. There's a lot of pictures and a lot of people. Like, yeah. A lot of documentation, which you know um, I which like. You know you need a document. It so, helps. Yeah. Wow, that's weird. Yeah. Never heard of that. Yeah, it's a good one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, we start getting into that kind of stuff. I think uh, start there. Yeah. Hmm. And just not to get off, not to get too off topic. I was going to ask you in the intro episode. What you said you need a document. You don't really buy into the UFO stuff so much. What do you think about the Pentagon released video? That Tic Tac. Is was that the guy that was a fighter pilot? That yes. Was he on Joe Rogan? Yes, I believe so. Commander Fravor. I, yeah, I did listen yeah. to that. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, is, not to say that I don't believe, um, but, uh, you know, it's it's very easy for people to um, make some shit up and then just give an account of what happened. Right. But, but you, he's you got know, documentation. He's got proof. He's got video, right? Yeah. Did he I, have video? Eyewitness. Yeah. There's, it's, like, it's infrared, but he saw it with his naked eyes. Right. And he said it went from like... And he's obviously reputable yeah. as far as like his, you know... Hundred percent. Yeah. So. Yeah, and he said he went for the the object went from like sixty thousand to two thousand or something like that, in which seconds. is seconds. Not uncommon too to for people to say that they watch these lights. They'll go from you know one point to the next. Yeah. Extremely fast. But also they were tracking it, like they were following it, and then it got so close to like made ripples on the ocean, and then it looked like it docked with something, which brings up USOs. Right. Which is a whole nother topic. Yeah. And just as awesome, I think. And uh, what is a USO for the people that may not? Unidentified submerged object. Yeah. Yeah. Much like the Abyss. If you've seen the movie The Abyss, that's kind of what that's based on. Hmm. Yeah. But we're not talking about that today. Well, it could tie into it a little bit, right? These people bit. are disappearing. A little bit. Which is what we're going to be discussing. The yep. Missing 411, disappearances yes. in the national parks. Yes, on this first official episode of the Terribly Vex podcast. It's official. Am I incorrect? No, I think you're right. Okay. I think you're correct, yeah. There we go. And I'm Justin Perlioni, and you... Josh Branson. Yep. So, yeah. we... We got, go a couple, right we got a couple missing 411 cases. We're not going to go through the whole, because there's, there's so much. How many books are there missing 411 books? Five, six, seven? There's a bunch. It's probably like 411, I think. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. A ton. So, but, but in in that, there's, um, what, does he have a thousand cases? Oh yeah, At, yeah, a ton, and it's and he's got very, very specific weird. criteria for a missing person to go into his books. So, who, who are we talking about? David Pilates. Yeah, 
Okay. I didn't know if you were just saying, in, okay. I thought you were talking about Dwight for a second. Oh, no. Okay. No. And I also thought you meant just in general, how many books are there? 411. Right. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry. So stupid. <laughs> All right. But you picked out some choice cases. Well, in the eastern U.S., I think he has about 13 cases listed. And... Um, Again, not all of those took place in the Smokies, and his criteria sort of narrows it down to, uh, you know, just a handful. Some of those can be kind of quickly eliminated suicides. People like to go into the woods off themselves. Yes. And, uh, but these are very different because these people just disappeared. And uh, as you'll see, there's not really any reason for suicide. It's kids, an older lady. She just disappeared while hiking with some friends. and uh, But there were a couple of cases. Uh, I think it was Derek Luking. I think he his car, he left his car at Newfound Gap, and he kind of went off into the woods. They think it could have been a suicide, but, uh, you know, he could have actually thought he was uh, some sort of a just, wild outdoorsman that could have handled the... Just never to be seen again. Never to be seen again. Went off trail, perhaps. But... Uh, Man, they found his car, and he had just purchased some outdoor gear, some hiking gear, but uh, that was all left in his car apparently. So, see that kind of stuff is what makes these things so weird. Like, why? What are you why doing? would you buy it just to leave it in your car yeah. if you're going to go off and do some bear grill stuff? Yeah, I don't know. It's very, very strange, and these they all are because oftentimes. They're just with family, like, and they just turn around, and one second they're there, the next second they're gone. They're with somebody, right? Yeah. Um, so I guess of the three cases that we're going to be talking about tonight, let's start with Trini Lynn Gibson, 1976. Yes. She was 16 years old. She disappeared October 8th from the trail that goes out to Andrews Bald. She was going up there like... Uh, a class trip, like a little field trip. And they were going to hike out to Andrews Bald. I think they got there about 1230 in the afternoon. And uh, it was going to be a pretty simple little trip, just hike out and hike back. This was the 70s, so I don't think there was any more chaperones than like the bus driver from what I've been reading. So there wasn't anybody else there. It was just the students and the bus driver. And Andrews Bald, that's the one we went to. That is the one we went to, yeah. Okay, just making sure. Which now it's like, you know, there's lots of stairs. It's very right. well, you know, taken yeah. care of. Which back makes then. the hiking all that much easier <laughs> in, for a in novice. Some cases it does, yeah. Right. When you actually have steps. Ugh. They've done a lot of trail maintenance on that trail. But, um, yeah, so and they get there and uh, they hike out. And she kind of goes back and forth between groups of friends and they make their way back to the parking lot about 3.30 p.m., and she doesn't show up. And eventually they have to, you know, they start searching for her. How old was she? I'm sorry if you said that. 16. 16, right. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. And uh, But the weather was kind of overcast, which is normal for Klingman's Dome in that area up there. It's not uncommon. I don't think it was raining at that point yet, but uh, it seems to be sort of a, common thing in the uh, missing 411 cases is that the people go missing and then soon thereafter the weather turns you know gets rainy foggy and um, makes it that much harder to inclement look. the weather is very inclement inclement and uh Susan it makes inclement tracking <laughs> dog tracking makes it almost impossible even though they use dogs up there uh to for on trini's case yeah. They'll always use them to see if they can catch some scent, but, uh, you know, it becomes much more difficult. So I was looking at in the book you gave me just a little bit ago, the, the Dwight McCarter book. He's talking about how the rain washes You so mean the much. signed copy the of signed Lost? The signed copy of Lost. Dwight Carter's uh, journal yeah. of selected cases, people that he found. Was it Lost? A Ranger's Journal of Search and Rescue. That's the one. Yes, I'm looking at it right now. But he was talking about how the rain makes everything 
obviously. I mean, it's not, you know, a genius. It doesn't take a genius to realize that. But, yeah, the rain right. makes everything so much harder. Much this, more difficult. Yeah. And this always happens. Yeah. Right before and, rain. Not always, but, you know, like you said, usually. Yeah, and so, like, when um, Dennis Martin, when he disappeared in 69, like I mentioned uh, in the first uh, intro podcast, uh, the weather turned shortly after, and uh, like I said, they didn't really know the idea of search and rescue back then before Dennis Martin was to just, you know, get as many people in the area as you possibly could, Mm -hmm. saturate the area with people. But that destroys any sort of like possible sign or evidence of where he may have gone or whatever. So right. by this point in 76, they would have probably fine-tuned the process a little bit more. And uh, they wouldn't have done what they did with uh, with Dennis by just getting so many people up there. Right. It's a very uh, search and rescue people. The SAR people are very you know well-trained and uh, they're used to going off trail. And uh, they're very thorough. They'll recheck places over and over and over again, you know. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, they they certainly wouldn't have done what they did with Dennis in 76. They learned quite a bit from that one. And like I also said in the intro episode, that was like the one that sort of changed Search and Rescue and all the national parks. Because they just got so many people up there. Yeah. And they just destroyed it. Yeah. They would have been impossible to find anything. But yeah. that was the way they thought to do it. Which I so guess anyway. makes sense, in a way, before you... I don't yeah, know, but maybe like, I'm just... that would be like if I did that. And, I think in the book it says, you know, like 1,200 people or something like that. Oh, just, man, I didn't realize that many. Yeah, wow. yeah I'm just constantly, you know, bringing more people up. And you really need to, at first, I think, from what I've read anyway, just get the specialists in there, the trackers, the dogs, the people that really know what to do and what the, what they're looking for, right? So, yeah. Man. I didn't realize it was that many people. Yeah, so that, just to kind of real real quick, uh, talking about the Andrews Bald Hike, again, it's a very short trail. And it's not, you know, you're not going to, even back then they would have had signs. There's signs now that lead you uh, right back to the parking lot, you know. And it's yeah. a highly trafficked trail, so... It's such a weird trail to get lost on. And the fact that we're going to be talking about two cases tonight, two people 42 years apart disappearing on the same trail, both coming back is just, it's very strange. And the first one is Trini Gibson? Yeah, Trini Gibson. So what, what's the what's the backstory there? Like, what happened? Like, was she... Was she... Like with with her, <laughs> she with her family. No, no, it was a field trip. It was field a school trip. trip. Beard High School. Right. The bu- Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. Uh, uh, You're not listening. Uh, I'm not listening, Justin. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Let's get back to that. The story, if you will. Yeah. So anyway, they they just get back to the bus around three thirty, and they'd gotten there about twelve thirty, and. Um, you know, she was the only one that didn't get back. She was kind of bouncing back and forth between friends. I think she had even borrowed uh, somebody's jacket because it got kind of chilly up there, or whatever. And um, yeah, she was uh, she was she wasn't at the bus. So immediately, I guess the bus driver and a couple of people started looking around for her, and uh, they couldn't find her. And uh, I guess they contacted the park service, and the searching started immediately. Um, so by the end of the night, you know, they had, you know, lots of people up there and they got the dogs up there and stuff and started looking for, and, um, what's weird about it though, and I've seen this written several places, they said the dogs tracked her to like the Appalachian trail, uh, which means she would have probably taken the bypass trail instead of going up the paved path, which I assume was paved in 1976. I guess it was, I don't know. It takes you up to the Klingman's Dome Tower. And then it says something about like 1.6 miles down the road, uh, down the paved road. Uh, they were something about like the dog's tractor to like, I, I'm assuming the Klingman's Dome Road. And they found some cigarette butts and a couple of beers like on the side of the road. 
uh, and I've seen that several places. Like there was like, you know, five or six beer cans that had beer left in them that still seemed kind of fresh, like it hadn't been there for a long time, you know, these relatively new beer cans and the cigarette butts. And she didn't smoke that anybody knew of. But that the dogs tracked her to that point, and there was a couple of different dog groups, guys that had gone up with their dogs, yeah. that had still tracked her to that same All point. to that same... So yeah, so she goes missing on the trail from Andrew's Bald, and then somehow makes her way up the bypass trail, I'm assuming, to the AT. But as you look at the map, there's no entrance from the AT down to the road uh, today. I don't know if there was, you know... In 1976, but back, you know, right now there's no way to get there at 1.6 miles, which is what I've seen. Um, so I don't understand that, you know. Yeah. So all those, all the dogs tracked it back to that one spot. Is, is foul play the most? Well, they're common they're suspecting that there here. could be some foul play, right? Just because if she if she was actually tracked to that point, uh, just some dudes in a van, just. It's the 70s. I don't know. Yeah. There's got to be a van, right? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> like a bubble window in the back, I guess. Yeah. Well, that it's it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense though because if because I hike up there all the time and I know the area, there's no place, you know, from the tower, 1.6 miles away that gets you to the road. So she would have to go. There like, was back then, though. I don't know. I don't think so. It's. I mean. So like, thick up there. there, yeah. She would have had to just gone through the woods, because the uh, the way it's sort of laid out, the tower, the AT runs just just beside the tower up there, and then it sort of parallels the road all the way back, kind of basically just back to Newfound Gap, which is about eight miles away. Hmm. Um, but I've read weird things too, like you know some of the students thought that maybe she was being harassed by another student, but he was actually in school. And that was verified by uh, several people, obviously. Um, so it, there's a lot of different theories, but still she just disappeared, you know, from the trail. Yeah. Any evidence at all found? Nothing. Zero. Zero. The Man. only evidence there was was just the uh, the dogs tracking her. Supposedly, the dogs tracked her to this one spot. That one spot. Yeah, more than one team. To, uh, that is what a couple of is, them. Yeah, but then yeah. why was she going there in the first place? Right. So people theorize maybe she was trying to run away from home. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, again, there were there were no signs of that. I mean, her friends would have probably been able to say, you know, and surely they would have said something. Yeah, or maybe she didn't tell anybody, and she got away with it, and she's somebody else right now. That's possible. Why would a 16-year-old want to do that, though? There was nothing, uh, from what I've read anyway, there was nothing bad going on at home. Yeah. Which isn't to say that there couldn't have been, but... You know, it, it's, it's... She left some money. How much money? I don't know. We'll okay. Get on her I was going to go, I don't know. Do you think uh, do you think it's just like this could be like typical teenage angst that just made her want to go and then she did and now she regrets it? Think about it. I'm thinking maybe. Yes. <laughs> I got it. Solved it. She's living in California now. But I still can't figure out where this spot would have been on the road. I don't understand yeah. where that's... Anyway. Because I, I certainly can't... Uh... Because today there's no there's no place that sh such a short distance. I think the nearest place to get to the road from Klingman's Dome Tower is probably about three or four miles down the trail before it brings you back out to the road where yeah. there's a spot, and it's just near the Mount Collins Shelter. So, hmm. Well, but and also if you read up on it too, the dogs had issues because the rain and stuff kind of did move in shortly after she disappeared the rain right. and fights rainy and foggy up there all the time and this was uh you know in october mm -hmm. um so you've got sort of the, the changing of the seasons because that's that's on the old the susan clements case was also in october oh jumping forward to 2018 um, yes i'm sorry to 
jump. It was October. We're going to bypass Thelma? October 3rd. No, we're not. I just wanted to say it. Just like a, it, what, when was Thelma's? Thelma's was uh, September 25th. Around the same time. Yeah, all in the fall, right? Mm-hmm. What could that be? I don't know. I'm, again, I'm going to go with aliens based on nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. This said updated October 3rd, October 1st. Wait, which one is that? Which one are you talking about? This then? is the Susan Clements. Susan. Yes. She was September also. <sighs> Damn me in this article in the Charlotte Observer. <laughs> it's wrong. Damn. I look like an idiot. Consulting but our notes here. It was in, it was on the same trail. The Susan Clements. In around in the fall. In the fall. Same time. We're, we're, it, we're you what's know what's going on here. You make I a good I, point. You know, September twenty fifth, nineteen eighty one is is gonna be your uh Thelma Pauline went by Polly Melton, right? Again, September 25th. So Susan Clements disappears from uh, the Andrews Ball Trail, September 25th, 2018. Oh, man. It must have hit you somewhere. You yeah. must have seen it and put the two together because yeah. I hadn't even noticed that myself. So we're talking about disappearing on the same day. That's a weird coincidence. Yeah. It's also another weird coincidence. Do we want to get into that right now? I'm going to hold off on that. That little tidbit okay. that I've All discovered right. in my research. It's a little little mini teaser. It's we'll, odd. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you. Stick around. We'll tell you. <laughs> it's odd. It's just a, it's an odd little piece of information that I just happened to notice. Yeah. It's just another good coincidence. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of go more into some of the uh, Trini information, but I was not prepared. I'll admit that right hey, now. Me too. Me too. Believe me. There's so much when you go into yeah. the uh, the search of these, and that's why we're not going into the Dennis Martin case tonight. Right. We're going to have to prepare a thorough outline for that one. And that's the one that I really looked into, unfortunately. So <laughs> that and the Susan Clements one. But, but you didn't you... have uh, Dwight's book, yes. and he's got like a day-by-day -day of the search in there, which we're going to go through. And sort of pull some mm -hmm. of the important pieces of information out there. Yeah. Yeah. Because that that one's just got a, a life of its own. We can do it's gonna hours be a, on that. Yeah, we're just going to do a full episode on that one. Yeah. But these, uh, we're just going to combine into one. Yeah. Because these, you know, these... These ones are just so boring. <laughs> Dennis Martin's where it's at. That's where it all started. Yeah. So what were you trying to get at here? Actually, I'd stumbled across some older disappearances, too, that were kind of odd. But you know what? I don't have any of that information tonight. It's okay. We're just, we just have these three, and that's fine. We'll get going on those another t on another day, Yeah. another episode. Like I said, I don't think this needs to be like a... People aren't coming here for all of their information right. about what happened to some people who right. disappeared. Right. We're trying our best. We're gonna just we're just having fun with this. So go ahead, crinkle those papers. Can you hear that? No. Good. I don't we should. I want. We should. We just need to be passing papers back and forth. Just <laughs> we don't know. It, just like like so much data that we're looking through. There is a lot of data. Yeah. There's a lot of information. I guess we could talk about Thelma Pauline. Yes. Old Polly there disappeared September 25th, 1981, just a few years after Trini there. Uh, she was hiking in the Deep Creek area, which is going to be on your Bryson City side of the park, if I'm not mistaken. You've been there? I've been in the area, but I've not been on this particular trail uh, I was going to do a hike over there at the Road to Nowhere, but that's kind of close to where it's the same vicinity of the... Okay. Uh, but Polly, she was hiking with uh, her pals, Trula, and Red Cannon is his name. I Old love Red. That. I love that. That can be, that's like a movie name. 
It is. That was his, uh, I guess that was his nickname. Where he's got it in quotations here. Red Cannon. Old Red. And uh, just very quickly, they were hiking up the trail in the Deep Creek area, which I just mentioned a second ago, but mm-hmm. I'll mention it again. <laughs> and uh, this was a nice day. The weather wasn't bad. Not up in the higher elevations, so they're down pretty low. Weather can change rapidly up in the higher elevations of yes. the Smokies. It moves in quick. Okay, so you need to be prepared out there night when you we go. Went up there. Sorry to talk over you. That was rude of me. No, no, no. It's fine. No, but that night we went up there, it rushed in. Remember, it was bright and sunny, and then tsh, wind, yep. clouds. But as they say, sometimes the fog, you know, they, they like to dismiss a lot of stuff when they talk about these disappearances and say that the fog moved in and it was so dense. Mm-hmm. I have never hiked in my life where the fog was so dense that you couldn't see yeah. a trail or a sign or, you right. know, it's dense. It's but like it's, you're, yeah, it's not, it's not, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. And a lot of these disappearances happen the same time of day, three, four, five. This time of year, you still got many hours of daylight left. So mm-hmm. the idea that you're just lost in dense fog and you can't like, that's silly. I think that's just plain silly. Yeah. I wonder if they, 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 maybe they fall and hit their head and they're just confused. And yeah, and like the fog is not helping that. So right, that's, uh, that's the only thing. <laughs> I wouldn't say to, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, kind of makes sense. But that many people, yeah, falling and hitting their head. Even in the Deep Creek area, um, you know, that time of year, especially that time of day, uh, it's going to be a lot of people walking, probably. Quite a few people. They're going to be passing people. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And so, like, if somebody goes missing, you know, most times people will come forward and say, "Hey, I saw this person," or you know, or "No, I didn't see anybody." Mm-hmm. Of course, the rangers will start interviewing people. Yeah. So, anyway, you know, they're hiking in the Deep Creek area, and um, apparently, old Polly, she uh, she was feeling pretty good, so she sort of left her hiking buddies behind and kind of took off down the trail. And I guess just around the corner, there was a bench or something like this is uh, not like a backcountry trail where it's right. pretty primitive. This is more like a near a campground. It's like another touristy. I think it's even like used to be like an old service road or something. So it's very wide. Uh, okay. Okay. And like, I don't know, there's a trail like in Gatlinburg, like right there outside the, just going into the park, kind of in the Sugarlands area. Yeah. And there's like benches and stuff. Right. So I've read there was a bench here. They were half expecting her when she sort of hiked off and left them, um, that she would be sitting on that bench when they kind of rounded the corner. And, um, she wasn't there. No go. And they were just uh, they were just behind her. Like she wasn't gone for like an hour out of their, you know, out of sight. She was just around the corner. She just took off and, you know, they just assumed she would be waiting for him up around the corner. Yeah. And she uh, was a smoker. I don't know if she was a heavy smoker, but it talks about a lot of things that I read that she was, uh, they had stopped and paused for a moment so she could suck down a cigarette. And uh, so she wasn't going to be like, you know, booking it. Plus, she's hiking with her friends. And they're trying to have a nice little day together. Meanwhile, she's lighting up. And she's lighting up. (laughs) But they rounded the corner up there and uh, she wasn't sitting at the bench. And they never saw her again. And nobody ever saw her again. Do you think... It was because she smoked. Is that what you're trying to get at here? (laughs) That's exactly what I'm getting at. This podcast is an anti-smoking podcast. That's what we're getting down to here. (laughs) (laughs) See, that just goes to show you're so these people are so close together, and somebody disappears. That's the weirdest part to me. And there's a lot of that in the missing four one one. Yeah, so many of them. They're just there one second, gone the next. Yeah, Dennis Martin, which, you know, we'll get get into um, in the next episode. He was just out of sight of his father and their family for just a few minutes. He had just gone into the tree line. Mm-hmm. 
kids playing hide and go seek. You know, they were going to jump out, scare their parents, even though they watched him go into the woods. Yeah. And, uh, of course, they immediately attacked that area and, you know, spread out and started looking for him, and he was gone. There's no bear, okay, that can grab a kid like that and just disappear within minutes, seconds. What about a wild hog? It's another theory put forth. See, whenever I when I do go hiking, I'm more scared of them than I am of a black bear. Apparently, they can get huge. Yeah, they're terrifying. Those cages you see if you go hiking out there, that's for those. Yeah, it's to catch those guys. They used yep. to have like a, um, I guess you'd call it like a program where they'd go out and actually kill those things. They're ferocious beasts. Yeah, they're like six hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah, and then ugh. I've never actually Even seen one. I've been around fr like a friendly pig that's giant, and I'm scared. Cause now imagine one with tusks. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's pissed off that they're you're close to it. Prehistoric almost. Yeah. And they they are an invasive species around here, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah, okay. They were, I don't know if I'm saying this wrong, but they, were they like bred with something else did something start breeding with something else and created those i'm not sure but i do know that they are not meant to be here right but they tear up all kinds of yeah they're i've just... seen some of them like i've seen where they've tor torn up the ground yeah i've seen that quite a bit in some of the backcountry trails when i've been hiking it's it, you right. can definitely tell when they've been digging with their snouts and their tusks mm -hmm. and you know according to bricktop and snatch they can go through a human body in a few hours yeah so uh <laughs> the, the, the boy it's nothing that's just a snack that's true but they're also very noisy creatures and i think i've heard them before too it's frightening it's a frightening sound so you've heard them before. oh yeah where i work they're all oh they're all around there really tearing up gardens and stuff we got traps set and in, in like the, uh, so like in the upper elevations, like I've never heard, um, we'll say like if you're doing like Mount LeConte or something, I've never heard anything up there. Yeah. Where I heard it was going out to grit. Heard it. <laughs> sorry about that, everyone. That's your, no, that's, that's going to happen right. occasionally. Uh, was going out to. You're a growing boy. It's okay. Yeah. Going out to Gregory Bald and uh, I heard him out there. It had to have been. That had to have been what I heard. Mm -hmm. Was uh, a very loud rustling was what I heard. And it was sounded like a lot of things rustling. Yeah. And it was sort of like down in a, I don't know if you would call it a ravine, but it was kind of like a valley, kind of like right next to the, uh, and it was in winter. So there were no leaves on the trees. Everything was kind of down. There was no, there was nothing to muffle the sound, but it just mm -hmm. carried up, you know, and I could just hear a lot of rustling. Is that what you're talking about? Is that like what the... Hear that, and every once in a while you hear the the, the god awful squeal of a pig. Like, <laughs> God, I hate that sound. I've never heard that. It's frightening. It's so loud and just. It's like a I'm scream. Gonna, or I'm something? not going to do an impression of it. If I mean, you can Google yeah. a pig squeal, and everybody's heard it. But then you got the babies, but then the big ones. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. And just knowing they have they have tusks attached. No, thank you. I think yeah, I'd rather deal with a black bear. We don't have grizzlies or anything around here, thank God. Yeah, and I don't think do they. I don't think they actually like make noises, do they? Like black bears, like they don't make like rustling. Like they're not that kind of loud. When I don't they're... think so. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they rustle, but I don't think they. They're not, you know, known for that. They're not rooting around the ground. And all right. That. Yeah. Not like those guys. No. That had to have been what I heard that time. Yeah. And it's only been once. Yeah. It's scary. And it, and I, like I said, I wasn't in the upper elevations. I don't know if they like to hang out in the lower elevations, but that was kind of just working my way into the trail. I think that trail is about five and a half miles one way, and I may have been two, two, three miles in at that point, so I hadn't yeah. quite kicked up into the higher elevations yet. Yeah, that's probably what it was. But, yeah, black bears, from what I understand, they're more scared. They're, they don't even bother you, like... Yeah. yeah, they'll just run off. Like if you just approach them. Yeah, unless there's unless there's you know some other circumstance involved. But yeah, so we're trying to figure this out, like with what could have taken these people. Yeah, Dennis Martin, a six year old kid. You know, it's plausible at that time. What I mean was there some sort of a 
It wouldn't have been. It couldn't have been a, a cat of some sort. There's like a bobcat, but there's not like any sort of. I mean, there's mountain lions. Yeah, but did we have them here? I don't think we have them here, right? Oh yeah, we do. Oh yeah, where I work, we've we've seen one or two. They're very very rare, but wow, I didn't here. know they're that. Like like eighty pounds to hundred pounds. I think I think, but they're but still. Well, I'm uh, learning uh, something tonight. Like I had a, no idea. A house cat, I wouldn't want to fight. So an eighty pound cat, <laughs> right? Jesus, no, thank you. But yeah, we yeah we saw one a couple months ago. They got it on the trail cam up there, and uh, it was a it was a big deal because it, it's very rare. Did you hear about that guy that just choked one out? Well, that, not just, but maybe like a year ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell you, if I choked out a mountain lion, I hate taxidermy. That <laughs> thing would be on my coffee table, <laughs> mounted. <laughs> that thing's trying to kill me. Where was this? And was you, this Colorado? I think it was Colorado. Yes. Choked out a mountain lion. Yeah, and apparently my my boss is a big outdoorsman, and he said uh, big cats, mountain lions especially, have very thin uh, neck musculature. So, like, their arteries are right there. So if you're ever getting attacked by a mountain lion, try choke to choke that it out. Choke out. Choke that some bitch <laughs> out. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. So you've actually seen mountain lions here. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they're around. Huh. Very rare. Again, but... They are here. How many of those trail cams do you have out there? I'm not sure. I'm not really on that end of it. Mm. I probably should have just made up 27. I should have just made up. <laughs> you should have. Yeah. So is that why they have them, though, just to see what's... Yeah, because, you know, we got... Kind the, of running around? the trail. Yeah, just to see what's up there. And then trails, and then we have dumpsters also. And then stuff comes down there. Bears constantly. They're all around. How long have I lived here? Since... Fifth grade, I saw my first bear just a couple months ago. Huh. Yeah. So that just goes to show they don't like people. So, <laughs> it, 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 no, a bear's not going to take a person. No, they're going to run. Sometimes yeah. they'll bluff charge. Yeah. Um, and I don't even, do black bears do that? I know occasionally a black bear will attack. Yeah, they had to, on Mount Lacan a few years ago, they had to put one down because it was being aggressive. Not to say it could have actually or would have actually done anything. Yeah. But if it's, I think it was following people on the trail. But they put it down? Yeah. Just Everybody was upset about that too. Yeah, just move it. Just move it. Take it off. But they, um, yeah, they actually um, killed that one. Hmm. Or euthanized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was following people, and uh, so normally if you throw a rock or yell, yeah, they'll leave, but this one wasn't. It just kept following people, and quietly, too, I think, was the other thing. So stalking. Stalking. Yeah. It was exhibiting some stalking behavior, so you're walking the trail. That's frightening. But there was a lot of people up there, and there's a lot of noise. Just talking about the Dennis Martin case again. A lot of people. Bear's not going to hang around for that. No, 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 no. And reading the first, it was the first caretaker on Mount LeConte. And of course, this would have been in the 1920s. Yeah. He, he actually saw a wolf on Mount LeConte. Wolf? I Over the course are, of several I, years. Red wolf? I, must, uh, uh, I thought those like were... Like a gray wolf. Really? Yeah. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. We're um, both learning today. Yeah, he's got it in his book. And it's basically like his journal that he kept. Uh, I think his name was Paul Adams. I could have just said the wrong name. It's okay. It, it, but he was the first caretaker, helped build the first lodge up there. And again, this would have been like 1925. So about 10 years before the Smokies became a national park. Huh. And I can't remember. I think the mountain was privately owned. So, well, it would have been, I guess. Yeah. He had a dog, German Shepherd, but they would actually see this wolf on a semi-regular basis up there. Not a coyote, mind you, a wolf. I had no idea. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Well, I don't think they're there now, but, and I don't oh, know if they okay. would have been back in the 60s when Dennis disappeared to grab him. Okay, so they're gone now. 
Yes. For all you know, for all we know. Yeah. This again, this was a long time ago. I thought hundred you, years okay. ago. Okay. I don't know. It's just it just it just proves my point that what I'm doing is correct by not going into the woods. There's scary <laughs> real things out there. Yeah, and again, we're talking about the animals here, but like, you know, old Thelma here, she's just hiking with her friends in a right. you know, low elevation sunny day in the afternoon, rounds a corner. You know, she's out of sight of her friends for a few minutes maybe. Disappears. Gone. Forever. No trace on this one? No trace, no Zero. nothing. Yeah, no nothing on that one. Man. Same as with Trini, even though the dogs tracked her to a certain spot on the road, they still never found anything. That is so weird. That, yeah. that, I actually heard a, was it, here we go, David Pilates, Pilates, Pilates? Pilates. Pilates. There we go. I need to hear you say it wrong a few times before yeah. I can say it right. That's Well, that's a good system. Because I said it wrong last time. But I heard a quote from him of something along the lines of, and so I hope I'm, I'm, I might butcher this, but the more you learn, the weirder it gets, because everything is just so. I would agree to that. Weird, yeah. Yeah, the more you look into it, and there's all kinds of different theories, like about Thelma. Like there's one that she ran off with some dude. She'd been married a couple of times, but uh, you know, none of these things ever seem to really uh, make sense once people started looking into it and. Let's see. So, so what? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, that's it. Oh, I thought that you were... was one of the theories that she uh, ran off. You know? She, yeah. She was married at the time. I think it was her second or third husband. But she, you know, they thought, well, she's run off with some fella. What if this is all like one big, like, group of people, like uh, the village? You see that movie, The Village? Yes. Or the beach. Right. Like, what if, what if that's all this is? They just run off and they're like, all right, screw this. And like, I know where this is. And they find it. And then there's there's some community right now in the middle of the national parks. Each each national park has one. <laughs> that's a pretty wild theory, Justin. Yeah. Yep. Planes can't fly over it. But it is important to note also that uh, there's lots of places in the park where there are not trails, even though there's about a thousand miles of trails in the Smokies. There's still vast swaths of untouched forest. Who knows? People may have never set foot there ever. Yeah. As a child, I oft wondered, still do sometimes, there's got to be families out there just living in the woods that have never, like, seen, you know, like the kids have never seen what it's really like. Do you think that's, do you, do you think that's possible? Like... Somewhere in the Smokies? Yeah. Well, you know, that's. Uh, I think that kind of goes into what Dwight McCarter's theory is about what happened to young Dennis. Oh, boy. Dennis again. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe this uh, happened with uh, Thelma and Trini as well. He calls them wild men. Really? So yeah. He's got a whole... Yeah. Hmm. And he actually told me that, too, when I... I've talked to him about this, you know, on those guided hikes that he gave. Yeah. Went on two of them with Dwight. And he, I was asking him about Dennis's case, and that's what he said, that he thought. And I think he said that in some other interviews as well. And I think you can even find those on YouTube. I think he was thinking that he was probably nabbed by one of these wild men, uh, guys that lived in the back country. See, that's, that's what creeps me out more than, like, Bigfoot alien anything Mountain lions is just the hills have eyes kind of, <laughs> kind right. of people yeah psychos that yeah. live out in the woods <laughs> exactly yeah I don't like that at all because there was uh recently and I say recently within the past 10 to 12 years maybe uh one of those wild men that lived somewhere out there near Catalucci and I think they called him the wild man of Catalucci which I think I mentioned to you before. I think so. Sounds familiar. And if you go on the internet, I think you can actually see some pictures that people have taken of that guy. And they were like literally taken looking through like bushes and stuff where he was staring at them off in the woods. Jesus. Yeah. 
exactly what you would think. Like if you saw some person staring at you, you know, and yeah. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know where he lived out there. I have no clue. Uh, that's that's a very remote section of the park. Um, it's kind of like Cade's Cove, except it's not as big. It's not like a um, a loop. It's one way in, one way out. Yeah. And uh, but again, it's a very remote section of the park. And so to get back in there, I mean, he could have had a house anywhere, a cabin, a shack. I don't know. Well, it's got to be a shack. <laughs> Man, you can't. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, so he lived out there. So there's at least one confirmed case of a wild man, but he never harassed anybody. I don't think he ever bothered anybody. Was, is that the guy that had a lot of dogs? I remember somebody, they found a guy, and he was like living out there, and he had like 37 dogs, and they all... I don't think that's him. Okay. It's a different... Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really remember. I just... I don't even remember where I saw that, but... Hmm. It was I've never heard, is that somewhere associated with the Smokies? Again, uh, I, of course, I don't have the information right at hand. <laughs> why, why would I? I will make that into another episode. We'll yeah, the Dog Man, the Wild Man, Dog Man. Huh. So, anything else about old Thelma? Well, I don't believe so. Sh- there's a lot. There's so much. Yeah. That I don't know. Now, is this the one that had the, speaking of dogs, the dog? Oh, no, this is, uh, that would have been Trini. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, but do you want to get into um, talking about what happened to Susan a few years ago? Yes. Real quick? Yes, I do. Susan Clements. Did you read up on that one? A little bit. Yes, I did. From the <laughs> the lying Charlotte Observer from earlier, <laughs> made me look like a fool. What was that? The they gave you the wrong date. Yeah, I guess it was like the internet date or the oh, uh, I, don't know, I don't know. And then updated. I don't know. It's Charlotte. Whatever that means. Yeah, I guess. So I guess this was. She was a fifty-three-year-old mother. Fifty. Let me say that again. Fifty-three-year-old mother. There we go. From Ohio, was hiking to Andrews Bald. There it is again. On uh, September 25th, the same date. Same day as Thelma. And she was known as... Polly. Mitzi Sue, quote mark, Susan Clements. And uh, what does it say here? Two miles west of Clingman's Dome parking area is where they found her body. In, yeah. You said rhododendrons? Yeah, so like two miles west, so basically kind of two miles south of the Clingman's Dome Tower, and then uh, three quarters of a mile off trail down a drainage. Yeah. And again, she was coming back from Andrews Bald, disappeared just like Trini did on the way back. And so you get up there, you're near the parking area, you can hear people up there, it's very busy, there's signs everywhere. How she could have possibly gotten confused and just decided to mm-hmm. and there was there's no reason why you would go off trail, especially as thick as the 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 tree cover is up there. Yeah. It's, it's incredibly a, thick. Very thick. Like you've you seen it with your own it. eyes. Mm-hmm. But we did find that one drainage that we you could easily mistake. If you're confused for whatever reason, you could mistake it as a path. Yeah, it sort of starts as a path, but then right, it quickly right. turns into that's true thick trees again, and you'd know that you've gone the wrong way. Mm-hmm. You did start to want to go down that path that mm-hmm. day, didn't you? There's like a little fork, but one's a drainage. Yeah, <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. But and I guess uh, same kind of circumstances here. Sorry to interrupt. No, 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 no. Daughter decided to hike ahead a little bit. Yeah, I was going to turn around. And she meet was going to go up to the tower. And meet her mom back at the car. They had been here before to those Smokies. And uh, daughter goes up. Daughter comes back to the parking lot. Mom's not there. And that's that's the paved. That's the paved path. Yeah, it's paved. It's not like again, that her daughter probably took. I wouldn't have think right. she would have taken the bypass trail, which uh, parallels that trail, but it's not paved. Yeah, but does it? Does the bypass lead you to the tower? The bypass leads you up to the Appalachian Trail. Oh, yeah, you just said that. And there's another sign up there. 
okay. and you can turn right will bring you back to the tower or you can turn left and start heading south down the at which is what she did for two miles until she decided to for whatever reason uh start hiking down a drainage which i don't think you could mistake for a trail it's pretty steep up there yeah it really yeah it really is you saw some of those places just going mm-hmm. out to andrew's ball where it just drops like off a drop off yeah it's like yeah. you're on the very crest of a mountain almost right. and it's just yeah and with a thick tree cover you know mm-hmm. and again you'd have no reason to yeah and when we were up there it was very foggy yeah, Remember but it, like it, it, it will get a lot foggier than that. Like when we got out to Andrews Bald, it was very foggy. Yeah, the, the view is supposed to be spectacular, but it uh, is. I didn't it's really great. get to see it. I just saw fog. So It was very foggy out there, but really yeah. the, the hike out wasn't too foggy. But it can get really foggy up there. And, of course, if you mix that with some rain and I don't know. I think they had light clothing on. They weren't preparing for any sort of like serious backcountry hike. So, yep. I'm just looking at this. They're saying that uh, during the search, again, weather was a problem. It had been sort of rainy and, you know, foggy up there kind of all week. That didn't just happen after she disappeared, by the way. Sometimes that can be... uh, you know, mysteriously attributed to why they can't find people in the missing 411. That wasn't the case here. It wasn't like that just right after she disappeared. It was like that that whole week. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't I didn't know that. I just I made a mental note of it when she disappeared. Hell yeah. And I saw that it was sort of attributed to Oh, the search is gone. You know, they can't find her because of the weather had turned immediately after. Like some sort of a weird coincidence with the other missing 411 cases. Yeah. It's not true. It so, was like that all week. And you're in all your missing 411 research. Like what are the, what how what's the percentage, if you will, that they find a body? Is it like 50/50? Sometimes they're just missing forever. Or then they find a body but it's it's in a very weird spot like where they should not have gone in like in this case. Yeah, that's, uh, that's certainly a common, uh, thing you'll see in a lot of those missing 411 cases, which I'm assuming this is going to be added to that list. There's no reason in the world why she should have been where she was at. And I think that's from from the pictures I saw, they were like, they had to get like rope, like climbing gear to haul her out. And yeah, I saw some of those pictures too. Yeah. It would have been very steep where she was. Of course, some of those pictures could have just been taken where they were actually searching. Like they were going to go search down there off the side just Mm -hmm. to see if maybe she had fallen off the side down in there. Some people will go off trail to go to the bathroom, you know, and they'll go too far and then they already get lost and they can't find their way back. I can't imagine she would go three quarters of a mile off trail down a drainage just to go to the bathroom. And from what, if I remember correctly, it was like so thick where she, where they found her body. Like it was tough. It was hard even for the the experts to get in there and get to her. Right. Yeah. Very thick rhododendron. Yeah. And I think she actually had to be helicoptered out. Had to helicopter her body out. So, like, if uh, a bunch of search and rescue guys that are generally in pretty good shape mm-hmm. can't get you out of a place, then you kind of have to wonder how the hell she got there. Yeah. I wonder if it was raining and perhaps she just, again, fell and then... I don't know that it would have been got... so steep that she would have, you know... Yeah. Hey, I'm just spitballing here, man. You don't just shoot me down. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Yeah. It's just crazy. It's possible. Anything's possible. Yeah. Or it's like, you know, like in... Uh... Eh, forget it. I was going to do a Romancing the Stone reference. Please. That's one of my favorite movies. Do you remember when they're in the jungle and, like, they fall down that little drainage river and they just get sloshed down all... Like, what if that happened? <laughs> <laughs> Something along those lines. Well, that would have been fun. Yeah. But not if she hit her head on the way down. They right. all hit their heads. Is my is my official theory. Right, they do. And aliens. 
Well, definitely. Well, yeah, of course, aliens. So, like, with Thelma, they never found anything. They never found her, and they never found any clues. She didn't leave anything behind. With Trini, they never found anything. Maybe the dogs were tracking that, you know. It's hard to say. But uh, they essentially disappeared. They found Susan's body seven days later. It's just very odd that you could get that many, especially after so many years of search and rescue, so many trained professionals up there, Mm -hmm. that she would just go disappearing uh, that fast in such a, you know, highly trafficked area. A lot of people, a a lot of people up there. And it takes seven days to find her body. Yeah, and she was, I mean, as far as seven days, she was very close. Like, it shouldn't have taken seven days. Yeah, so from the point That's like that, a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Thank you. Yeah, so like maybe from the point that she separated from her daughter up to the ATs, probably like two miles, plus another two miles down the trail, plus another three-quarter miles off trail. Mm-hmm. So, you know, almost five miles away from where they separated. It, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Being off out in the woods like that, it's like something picked her up and... Oh, abducted? Well, huh? I didn't want to use that word, but... Well, uh, you know what I think about that. I mean, what would be your theory about aliens abducting people? She was found, uh, as far as we know. They ruled out foul play, which is kind of odd. Uh, Do you mean just abductions in general? Yeah. I think that... Via aliens. I think that... Why would they be doing it? Because they created us. (laughs) This is... I didn't know this. And they're just checking in. You know, they're they're just doing little checkups. I also heard the theory... That the, uh, uh, let me try that again. The abductions that people remember are botched abductions. Like the aliens messed up. We're not, we've all been abducted so many times, but we're not supposed to remember it. But the few that do, the aliens messed up. That's just a little theory that I, you know, I like to think about. And uh, I don't know. I like to think that, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a huge religious guy but to me the idea that aliens created us in this whole universe makes so much more sense than one guy in the sky so i don't want to offend anybody but that's just my (laughs) you know my personal opinion like prometheus a little bit a little bit you think we were engineered in a laboratory grown in a petri dish It, it i would i believe that more than i do just a dude. Well, who created them? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, so there's the alien abduction thing and then but the people just disappearing like that though, that's that smacks of something else. Yeah. Which kind of, you know, electromagnetic fog. Ooh, this is your theory. I, oh, wait, 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 wait. We didn't, before you get into that, I'm sorry to interrupt your, I, but, <laughs> yeah. No problem. We had a, uh, the dog. Right, the dog. Yeah. You just discovered this. I did. Would you like me to? Go ahead. It's just an interesting little piece of information. So, Trini Gibson, uh, at the time of her disappearance, had a seven-year-old poodle by the name of Mitzi. Okay, she disappears on the same trail that Susan Clements disappears on 42 years later. Susan Clements' full name was Mitzi Sue Clements. She went by Susan. We're theorizing that she probably wanted to go by Susan as she came into adulthood. As she grew up, yeah. She, was... she didn't want to go by Mitzi Sue anymore, so she, yeah. everybody started calling her Susan. She, you know... So but I just thought that was very strange. What are the chances that you have a girl disappear on a trail in 1976 and she has a dog named Mitzi and then that many years later a lady disappears and her name is Mitzi? 
I just think that's very strange. Is this the one that was on the same day, too? No, Thelma was... Thelma, okay. Yeah, but nonetheless, same trail. Yeah. Coming back from Andrew's Ball. Mm-hmm. I just think that's a very interesting... It's weird. It's a weird one, all right. Because Mitzi's not a very common name. Yeah, so... Even just... though it was the dog named Mitzi. And... Still. It's still connected. <laughs> right, there is a, a little connection there. Yeah. Plus, they're on the same trail. Mm-hmm. You know? Same circumstances. Yep. And yeah, so that's just another little little coincidence. But then, what were you going to say about electromagnetic fog? Well, there's a lot of fog in the Smoky Mountains. It's known for its fog. Is that is that why they call them Smoky? Smoky Mountains. I think that's it. Huh. I think that's it. I did not know that. The land of blue smoke. The Cherokee <laughs> call it the Chaconage. Ooh. I think I just pronounced that wrong. That sounded cool. Chaconage. Chaconage. It's Cherokee. Yeah. Oh, and not Italian. No. Oh. Damn it. But it is the land of blue smoke. Uh, this will sort of tie into our Bermuda Triangle episodes that we'll be getting into later. Uh, is there? I I'm just wondering if I'm wondering. Okay, I'm wondering if there's some sort of unknown. Uh atmospheric earthly phenomenon taking place here that people are walking into that we're not aware of yet. Well, didn't you have an experience something or well, was it fog? I don't know if it was foggy or not, but it was foggy. It was foggy. So there was that. Uh, so I'm not going to give the location that this happened. I'm going to keep that a little secret just to keep people out of danger. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, so I'm hiking along there. And Where was uh, it? It's a secret. Oh, just does a test. You passed. <laughs> okay. I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> I almost gave it away. Uh, I just don't want, because we have so many listeners, I don't want people just pouring into this location. Right. right. You know. Investigating. Right. Yeah. Keep it a secret. This has happened to me once, and uh, I hike quite a bit. But uh, it was like I walked into a, and I've actually read this somewhere before because I started Googling it uh, <laughs> to see if uh, this had happened to anybody else. And it seems like it has happened to other people. But I'm hiking along, and normally, even if you're hiking by yourself, um, you're going to hear birds, you're going to hear wind, especially in the higher elevations, pretty windy up there most of the time. It was like I walked into some sort of a bubble where there was no sound whatsoever. Did it fade out or did it just It cut? was instant. It was like I walked into it and it caught me off guard so much so that I just like stopped. It was the first thing I noticed. And it was very strange. And it's only happened to me once. Now how, on a scale of one to ten, how were you scared? It was like everything was staring at me. It was like I was not supposed to be there. That was the feeling I got, uh, kind of trying to put myself back there in that frame of mind again here as I'm standing there. Because I was taking some pictures. I just kind of stopped to take some pictures, and I just knew immediately that something was was not right. That's the best way I can put it. Yeah. And, so you, uh, weren't really, you weren't scared. You were just on edge. Like You were like, oh, boy. You, I was apprehensive. Okay. I was, um, you know... Heightened senses. Yeah. My senses were heightened at that point. Gotcha. And so I'm just kind of looking around and uh, I, I'm start, I start trying to like hear things. Like I'm trying to hear a bird. I'm trying to hear because there'll be like chipmunks, you know, there'll be squirrels, there'll be wind, there'll be something that you can hear. And when you're hiking by yourself, you're not talking. You can generally hear those things, and they're actually pretty loud. You can hear the rustling of leaves, you know? Yeah. That was gone. There was nothing. There was no wind. There was no birds, no rustling of anything. It was like every little critter just disappeared at that moment, too. Like, everything was gone. Like, everything was hiding. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like I said, this has only happened to me once. And where was this? When? Where? It's a secret. 
God, you're good. Okay. Um, so then you just, you just kept walking? And- actually, you know what? I told my sister about this, and we hiked through this same area um, last year, year before last. And I told her exactly where, where it happened. I said this was the spot. And I don't know. It probably went on for about 100 feet, I'm guessing, of the trail. 100, 200 feet maybe. Because it didn't just happen in one spot. Like I kept walking through it and I couldn't hear anything. All I could hear was my footsteps and me breathing. Crying. You know? oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Whimpering. Yeah. Yeah. What if it was like like a... Like a, you were near a mountain lion, like you know when they say a predator's nearby, everything kind of oh shit. shuts the hell up. Yeah, it's perhaps, possible. Perhaps, yeah. I don't it know. wouldn't explain no wind. That's true. Which uh, yeah. honestly was the first thing that I noticed. Uh, the wind stopped. Where this was and where this is up there, it's relatively open, so you'll get a lot of wind through there, and it's not uncommon even in the upper elevations with the thick you know, tree, tree cover to get wind through the trees. Yeah. It was kind of like that, that day we were out there too. Yeah. So just imagine walking out through the woods like that. And then you're just, it's like you're in a sealed enclosed space and you just walk into it instantly. That's what that was. Except, but I wasn't, I was out and it was just normal seconds ago. Everything was fine. You heard stuff. You heard wind. Maybe maybe you're a survivor. You almost got four one one. Maybe you said that back when I told yeah, you about that a long time ago. Maybe that's like the first thing that Susan Clements noticed, and she's, "What the hell is this?" And the next thing you know, uh, gone. Who knows? Yeah, but abducted. Maybe you almost got got. Maybe she was. Maybe she did walk through something like that, and maybe she was ejected, ejected out of it, to where she was found. I'm just spitballing here. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe Dennis Martin was never ejected out of it. Maybe maybe this electromagnetic fog, as some people theorize, is some sort of a time rift or time portal that people step into, unbeknownst to them. Mm-hmm. Like a, like another dimension kind of rippling in and out. Like that's what that's another that's a Bigfoot theory. Is it Bigfoot's kind of just Right. He's blurry all the time. Yeah, we can never it's just like he's just in Which for is a why second. he can't be found. Yeah. Just in for a second from another dimension, but then whoop, I right subscribe back out again. to the theory that it's actually a creature of, you know, blood and substance and material that doesn't have any supernatural powers. Which to say is not possible. It could be. Anything's possible, right? The skunk ape. We subscribe to many theories here at the Terribly Vex podcast. Yes, yes, we do. I worked with a guy. Because we don't know. Worked with a guy who saw one. A Bigfoot. Where? Uh, I want to say it was somewhere out in Yosemite, somewhere out there. He used to live out up in oh. Idaho area, or somewhere up there. That's a hotbed of Sasquatch activity. Uh, oh, yeah, one of the biggest. But he, he showed me the picture he took. Typical Bigfoot picture. Blurry as all hell. Can't really see what it was. But his, this was, it was, his theory was this. It was kind of like later in the day. His theory was this guy was a nut job. And he told me, he goes, yeah. This one, this one was probably a day walker. He was, uh, his shift was over. He's heading back to the colony to send out his replacement. And I'm like, oh, God. Uh, okay. Good story. Nice theory. <laughs> An awesome picture. But So the picture wasn't too good. No. They never are. Yeah. Are they? I wish they would. Yeah. I don't know about that story. I don't yeah, know about that I don't, I, don't, I don't buy his theory. That's for sure. I will go ahead and tell you right now, I've never seen or experienced any Sasquatch activity. And I think it's actually called a skunk ape here in the southeast. Squatch. Never never seen a squatch. Yeah. You? Nope. Ever nope. caught anything in those trail cams? Nothing, nothing weird, unfortunately. Yeah. I wish, though. That'd be cool. Uh, but, but again, again it, like it would be blurry if we even if we did, it would be just a some yeah. blurry image. Even though you see the mountain lions perfectly and the bears perfectly in those images, the Sasquatch yeah. would. Another theory about the Bigfoot is that uh, it's a bear on the hind leg is just trying to grab something, but people just like they're looking at it like what the hell? It's like through trees and then they take a picture. And you know, you see those pictures where you like it's just a picture of woods, and you're like, I don't see anything at all. Many times, yeah. That's, yeah. that's probably what it's just a just a bear. Well, that's one of the theories for Dennis Martin too, is that he was grabbed by a 
Bigfoot. Well, you never know. The Keys family, which I mentioned in the intro, had seen something. Uh, this was sort of near near Cades Cove, which I think they say was about an hour and a half hike away from where Spence Field was. And uh, they saw some man-like creature hiding up in the uh, trees up there. It had something thrown over its shoulder. They were assuming that it could have been Dennis. I think yeah. they brought this to the police attention a few days after he disappeared. He realizing did. that they were actually in the same area and that that could have had something to do with his disappearance. Yeah. Didn't they find a shoe when they chased that? They found a, one of his shoes or the same in Oxford, I believe, it, during in my research. Yeah. Dwight... Okay. Um, I want to say ginseng. He knew a couple of ginseng guys that were out yeah. there and possibly found some bones. And they didn't report it because they didn't want to get Caught. arrested or whatever for yeah. whatever it happens for ginseng people. And this was several years after Dennis yeah. had disappeared. Who knows? Could have been another kid. Could have been one of those wild men uh, offspring. <laughs> So let me ask inbred you this. offspring that is you know if if you had a time machine and you could just go back and watch events, is there a specific missing four hundred one case that you would just want to just watch? Well, I don't know about all of them, but Dennis would certainly be up you there with the top. top. That's what I figured. Yeah, yeah. Just to I go would, up there too. and see what happened because it's such a mystery. Yeah, It'd be cool to do. With a, with a lot of stuff we're going to talk about, I think right. just a little time machine action. Yeah, but the, the that experience though, just kind of going back to that again for a second, that was really strange. And that it's only happened once. Yeah. Uh, that day, I was telling you we hiked through there with my sister. We uh, that was not like that that day. Which isn't to say that weather and stuff can't change. It does, obviously. Mm -hmm. And that for whatever reason, the wind may have not just been going through there at that particular moment. But it lasted for minutes. I would want to say that I was in that area right there for probably about, I don't know, six to eight minutes, probably. Kind of taking pictures and stuff because it was pretty and the weather was perfect and it was foggy and everything. But uh, it was still weird nonetheless. At some point when I finished taking pictures and kind of looking around and, you know... I said, all right, get the hell out of here. Yeah. I was saying that to myself. I really was. Out loud? Yeah. Yeah. I was saying it and I was thinking it. It felt weird. Man. I don't know how you had the nerve to stop and take pictures. I would have just been almost running. I run for nothing. <laughs> but I would, yeah. Yeah. So but you, very also, you also do uh, like nighttime star Astrophotography, there we go. Yeah, you know, shoot the Milky Way. And you hike at night by yourself? Yeah. Well, if you catch a sunset from a peak somewhere, chances are you have to hike five or six miles back in the dark, you know, because you're up there at the higher elevation to catch the sunset, and then you got to hike back in the dark. I don't... I'd, I would never do that. Alone? Yeah. No, thank you. I don't know. I don't know how you do it. I bring extra batteries for my headlamp, and I have at least two flashlights on me at all times. Gun? Maybe. I love it. <laughs> anyway. I would, I would, uh, no, could not do it. But that's the difference between you and me, I guess, huh? Yep. Well, you got anything else to add? I don't think so. Okay. I think for the Dennis Martin uh, episode, we're going to be thoroughly prepared. That's going to be the real big boy. Yeah, because we kind of just touched on these three cases right now. There is a lot more information in those. Um, and if maybe in the next episode, want to go back and revisit a few of those, which we probably will, I'll include some more information there. Yeah. Like I said earlier this evening, I think we should just pepper in a few a few different cases into our episodes. Right. But there's a lot of information on the Dennis case. Yeah. And I'm going to be digging into Dwight's book because he kept a journal about the uh, search and rescue as it went on day for day. 
So yeah, and I'll try to work up the nerve to talk to him about this. It'd when be I, nice if to I interview see him. him. That would be cool. But I've never interviewed anybody before, so we'd have to prepare thoroughly. Yep, it's worth a shot. Yep. Well, you want to go ahead and wrap this up? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, we hope you enjoyed this. It's a little bit of a little bit of babble yet again, but that's okay. And uh, we started strong. Yes. We t- the intro episode was way too strong. We should <laughs> we should have edited most of the good stuff out. Yeah, that's true. All right. Well. Uh, the the usual just go to uh, Instagram terribly terribly vexed podcast at Instagram. Do we have a Twitter yet? Twitter terribly vexed podcast. Everything's Twitter. T- we do have a Twitter. I, I believe so. I don't really use Twitter. Do I don't you? either. I, I, so just go on Instagram, or if you want to talk to us, email us. Terribly. If you have show ideas, that would be great. Yeah, if you want to hear about something, we have a lot of information. We have a list. We have things that we can, but we're constantly, in fact, there's a, I had a few things brought up to me recently uh, by, by some people and uh, things I'd never heard of. So always open to new possible show ideas and yes. we will dig into them. For sure. And I think I'm going to try to uh, get some type of a website going just to post we can post the sure. list we can post pictures of what stuff we're talking about yeah i want to give you some visuals so yeah. you can kind of look at some of this stuff on your own yeah and that's that's all that's all coming in the future yeah we're still pretty new to this yes. at least i am anyway yeah Fresh. me too really green green but uh yeah so just terribly vex podcast at gmail if you want to send us any th- ideas Pictures, whatever, whatever you want. Comments, even, and uh, positive comments only, please. Yes, any negative comments will be deleted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's it, though. Just across the board, terribly vexed podcast, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. That's that's it from uh, me, Justin Prelioni, and Josh Branson. Good night.